Hey guys, um, uh, so we are at the last lab, lab number nine, very exciting stuff. Um, so last time we went over, um, Arthropoda and Nematoda, which were the ectisozoans, um, and this week we're going to be talking about what are called deuterostomes, um, and we're going to talk about these four groups and then get to... Uh, this specific group here, vertebrata, which is also labeled as chordata. So the first phylum that you're going to need to know is echinodermata. Um, these guys are named for their spiny skin. They uh, include things like sea stars, sea urchins, sand dollars, and sea cucumbers. So they have four basic characteristics that you need to know. The first one is a calcite skeleton. So this calcite skeleton you can see over here, it's an endoskeleton composed of bone-like plates, also called ossicles, that are made out of calcium carbonate. So this endoskeleton functions like an exoskeleton, um, and the spines that you can see outside of here, of the sea urchin, are a part of the um, endoskeleton, and they go through the skin. Um, we also have pedicillare, which are pincher-like structures that are used for self-defense. Second characteristic uh, out of the four is a water vascular system. There are seven parts of this water vascular system that you need to know. Um, basically, it's a complex network of hydraulic canals um, that are used for locomotion, respiration, feeding, attachment, and nervous system control. So the seven parts are listed here, and you should know all of those. The next uh, characteristic is the metatubal connecti uh, connective tissue. So this allows the organisms to rapidly, as well as voluntarily, change stiffness. So they can be very stiff, or they can be flexible. Um, it's used as a defense mechanism, and they can even um, throw their stomach outside of their bodies uh, in order to feed. So you can see that here in the starfish. And the last characteristic is that they are secondarily radial, also known as pentaradial. Um, so that's their symmetry type. So you could cut it um, pretty much only a couple ways um, for it to be completely symmetric. Um, but that's pentaradial symmetric. Symmetry. So these guys are, uh, the larvae are bilateral, but the adults are pentaradial. And here uh, are all the parts of uh, one of these echinoderms. You can watch this video here on the water vascular system. As far as reproduction goes, um, many of these have separate sexes and they exhibit external fertilization. They are hermaphroditic and uh, exhibit brooding sometimes. As we know, uh, starfish are uh, able to fragment and can regenerate their arms, spines, and organs and other tissues. These are the five classes of echinodermata that we're going to need to go through. So crinoidea, asteroidea, ophoroidea, echinoidea, and holothuroidea. So the first class, echino echino echinoidea, uh, include sea urchins and sand dollars. So these guys are globe-like um, with no arms. Some have long spines like this one and they have tube feet that extend around the sides of the bodies. So make sure you answer all of your questions for these. Draw the anatomy. Uh, draw and label the ring canal. Aristotle's lantern is part of the internal anatomy. Uh, and lists the seven parts of the water vascular system, starting with the madreporite. For the dissection, which will be on the uh, practical, you'll need to know these parts and be able to identify them. So external anatomy that you'll need to know, the difference between an aboral and oral surface. So the oral surface is going to be the bottom where they eat from. The aboral is uh, the other side spines, madreporite, and then you have some internal anatomy, Aristotle's lantern, the gonads, and esophagus. 
The next class is Holothuroidea. These are sea cucumbers. They're fleshy, sausage-like uh, organisms. Um, they have an endoskeleton. It's reduced to ossicles. Um, and they do have tube feet and five rows. Or they're just absent completely. And their madreporite is on the inside. So where is the madreporite located? It's on the inside, right? Uh, the next class, Ophoroidea. Uh, these are brittle stars and basket stars. They have five long, flexible arms that radiate from the central disc. Um, their madreporite is on the oral surface, and their two feet do not have any suckers. So how do they differ from the other ones? Well, you can list some of those characteristics. These guys here, these are specifically the sea stars. They have five arms radiating from the central disc. Uh, their madreporite is on the aboral side, side furthest away from the mouth. Tube feet on an oral surface. surface. Um, predators or scavengers, these guys are considered predators, uh, believe it or not. And some have uh, the stomachs that they can uh, ex uh, expel out of their bodies in order to eat. So what are pedicillare? Those are those teeth, right? The next class, crinoidea. These are the feather stars and sea lilies. Um, they look like feathered structures. Um, the anus is on the oral surface. And um, the they do have a sessile stalk phase, but they are also free living. They do not have any spines or madreporite. So just look at these two guys, make sure you can identify them. So the next class is phylum chordata. So these include lancelids, tunicates, and vertebrates. There are five characteristics that you will need to know for lab as well as lecture. So these are the five characteristics of a chordate, okay? So we first have a notochord, provides skeletal support. Then we have pharyngeal gill slits, which strain food, water par uh, particles from food um, out of the water, right? Dorsal hollow nerve cord, also abbreviated uh, pretty commonly as DHNC. So if you see that, that just means dorsal hollow nerve cord. It develops into the central nervous system, including the brain and spinal cord. We also have the postanal tail, mostly for propulsion and aquatic species. Um, and then we have an endostyle, uh, which secretes mucus, um, traps food in the pharynx, etc. So a couple other characteristics. These guys are deuterostomes. Um, they're bilateral, triploblastic, so triploblastic, remember, they have the endoderm, ectoderm, and mesoderm. They're ucelomates, so they have a true body cavity to put their organs in. And they reproduce primarily sexually, um, but also asexually in tunicates. So the subphylum cephacordata, um, these are lancelets specifically. Um, so these are very small marine filter feeders. They have five, all five chordate traits, which is pretty cool, uh, in their adult stage. Usually, um, so as humans, as chordates, uh, we do not have pharyngeal gill slits in an adult stage. That goes away when we're uh, in fetus stage. Um, but these guys have them still in their adult stage. It's pretty cool. So list the four finding, uh, defining characteristics of chordates that are seen on the slide. So um, you can check it out here. Just use that photo to draw. Um, which characteristic is missing? Don't worry about filling that out. You can X that part out. Subphylum tunicata. So these are specifically the tunicates. Um, so they have planktonic larvae, but their adults are sessile. Um, the larvae also have all five chordate traits. Adults only retain the pharyngeal gill slits, so these are con the adults are considered filter feeders. And they have this tough outer covering as well. So describe two differences between the larval and adult tunicates, which are also known as sea squirts. So if you go back, 
what are some differences that you see. All right, and then the subphylum vertebrata. So these are lampreys, sharks, fish, birds, and humans. Um, so these guys have a neural crest, um, which forms skeletal elements like bones um, and your cranium. And they also have specialized cells like neurons. So they have very pronounced cephalization. Um, so they typically have all of their sensory organs in one space. The vertebral column or cranium is made of skeletal bone, cartilage, or a combination of the two. Um, and they do exhibit a closed circulatory system. So these are the six classes, and we have one order that you'll need to know. So that order first is petrono, uh, zimforms, zimtiforms. So these are lampreys specifically. Um, they're the earliest diverging vertebra. Um, they have, they are jawless, they're, so they're lacking a jaw there, as you can see in that photo. Um, their endoskeleton is made of cartilage and they don't have any scales. So what do they lack? They lack a jaw, right? So the class, uh, the next class, these are the sharks, chondrichthys, all right? So these are sharks, rays, skates. Um, they have uh, cartilage, all right? So they're, they have a very flexible endoskeleton, which is made of cartilage. Uh, their jaws and paired fins and scales. They're uh, viviparous, so, or they're also oviparous. So they'll either have live young or lay eggs, some of these. Um, and they have very acute senses uh, provided by their lateral line system. So skeletal makeup and other characteristics that unite the animals in this class. Well, they have cartilage, right? Okay. Um, the next class is Actinophrygii. So these are ray finned or bony fishes, uh, fishes. So they have webs of skin supported by bony or uh, horny spikes, aka fin rays. Um, they have an endoskeleton, which is made out of bone. They have scales, jaws, a lateral line, and an operculum. Um, and they also have a swim bladder, which is used for buoyancy, okay? So most of these organisms are going to be oviparous, so they will lay eggs, um, and they exhibit external fertilization. So what is the primary component that constitutes the endoskeleton of this class? Well, we said it was bone, right? And then the next class is um, sarcotophrygii, right? Uh, so these are lobed fin bony fishes, and they do not have fin rays. Uh, their endoskeleton is still made out of bone, like we said in the name. Um, and there are only eight species that are alive today. We have colacanths, which are, um, or coelacanths, which uh, we thought were extinct, but they're not. Um, here I am with a uh, Neil Shubin, who discovered this fish with feet. Pretty cool. It was an intermediate uh, between land animals and aquatic animals. Um, it's about 360 million years ago was when it was present. So how are the uh, sarcophrygii um, different than the actinophrygii? So just look at those characteristics. So the class uh, amphibia and the class reptilia so amphibia, mainly four legs, they spend um, most of their, or part of their lives in water. They have very smooth skin and they're ectothermic. So reptilians, they have what are uh, called amniotic eggs. So an egg with a shell and internal membrane. Um, they're ectothermic as well. And they have scales made of keratin. Then we have this class here, aves. So these are the uh, birds, right? So feathers are made of modified scales, endothermic instead of ectothermic, um, and they have wings, a bill, and beak, and they lay eggs as well. So um, describe similar characteristics between those two classes. What are the four stages of metamorphosis in amphibia? So you can look that up. Um, then we have the class mammalia. So there are several characteristics that you need to associate with mammals. 
Uh, the first one being mammary glands, which are used to produce milk. And then we have mammalian hair, which comes in a variety of forms, uh, maybe fur, whiskers, quills, sometimes horns as well. Um, the middle ear has three ossicles, okay? Um, so three middle ear ossicles. We have a four-chambered heart. Um, we exhibit some exothermic um, here as well. And then we have a sesum. Okay, so usually I put these memes in because we're about to dissect a rat, but you guys are very fortunate and you do not have to do that, um, but you can enjoy these memes anyway. All right, so what are two characteristics that make this mouse a mammal? Go back to that list and just name a couple of them. Um, you will need to know the different parts of the rat, uh, internal as well as external anatomy. Um, be able to answer these questions here. So be able to identify these parts um, specifically. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So make sure to turn in your last lab uh, by next Sunday night at midnight. Get the quiz done. If you need an extension, please tell me beforehand. And let me know if you need anything else. And just study for the practical that will start the week of November 16th and go until the following Sunday.